performance, USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command performance, presented this week and every week, till you're home from the hospitals and back from over there. Hiya, gang, this is Marvin Miller herding in another big command performance. We've corralled more top talent and tunes for you as ordered in those letters, care of Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. And riding herd on the whole shebang is that singing and dancing cinema star, your favorite and a grand guy, George Murphy. Hiya, George, and welcome to Command Performance. Thank you, thank you. Hiya, gang. It's very nice to be here. Well, Marvin, what's the first order for tonight? Coming right at you, it's from Corporal George Stagg in Tokyo, who wants to hear you sing a number. Oh, oh that kid should have his head examined. <laughs> well, it just so happens that I brought one with me. It's a little old and tired, but how about Embraceable You? Couldn't be better. Maestro Perrier, you may render the downbeat. That's it. Embrace me, my sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, you irreplaceable you. Just one look at you, my heart grows tipsy in me. You and you alone bring out the gypsy in me. I love all the very charms about you. Above all, I want my arms about you. Don't be a naughty baby. Come to Papa, come to Papa, do. My sweet embrace you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go too far, ladies and gentlemen. You've turned the boy's head. Well, good evening, Marvin. Oh, yeah. we said that, didn't oh, we? Oh, that's right. We did. Uh, yeah. uh, tell me, what's on the fire for tonight, Marvin? That's your line. Uh, yeah. No, well, it's a big <laughs> show, Marv. Big show. It's packed with solid stuff. Lots of fine things here tonight. Uh, should we do a little preview? I think it's well. I'd love to. Okay, here it goes. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have... Tear-jerking, heart-clutching, a drama. All right, all right, open up in there. Come on, come on, the other guys are afraid to come after you. But me, I'm a real he-man, see? I've been eating all my breakfast food, see? I'm a tough dick. And I'm out to get you, see? I'm a tough dick. Well, open the door, Richard. <laughs> and we have... Symphonic music that will live forever. Classical music. Ah, yes, George. And for a sample of that mellow stuff, here come the charioteers with I Love You for Sentimental Reasons. Darling. 
charioteers really sing a song. Tell me, Marvin, my boy, why do firemen wear red suspenders? I don't know, George. Why do firemen wear red suspenders? Why do they keep their pants up? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Mother, take my mittens off. I'm feeling my oats tonight. Also coming up, medical advice. Friends, do you suffer after overindulging? Hmm? Do you get that horrible, groggy, aching feeling after overeating? Hmm. Yes, I do. Well, it serves you right for making a pig of yourself. <laughs> and that just about tells the story of the next 30 uh, oh, minutes. Wait, excuse me, George. There's this message from the War Department. Oh, a message from the War Department. What does it say? Read it, boy. Read it. It says... <laughs> you beast. Bring home some butter today. Signed, Mrs. Marvin Miller. Oh, oh, that's the wrong war department. <laughs> well, never mind, Marv. Just be sure and bring home the butter. Now we've got a commercial coming up. A small sales talk on something called Connecticut. And to sing the commercial, our writers in ordered us to bring him that gal with a voice that's really Lilton, the ever-charming Martha Tilton. Well, Martha, swell, wonderful. That's just about the way you did it on your best-selling record, isn't it? Yes, George. And it was especially for PFC Ernest J. Coppler, who wrote us such a nice letter. Oh, and I'd hate to take that kid's pulse about now. <laughs> Say, Martha, I, I want to apologize for brushing against you out there in the wings. Oh, that's all right, George. Well, I had to squeeze by you to get on the stage. In fact, I had to squeeze by you again and again. Well, but, George, that passageway isn't so narrow. You'd have to squeeze against Martha. Listen, Junior, you walk your way, and I'll walk mine. <laughs> oh, double five. Anyway, right now it's time to establish a new custom for command performance. New custom? What's that? Well, Seaman First Class, Tim Landry's, pointed out 
that command should use an occasional serious lecture. You know, some of that long hair uplifting stuff. So for this purpose, we've invited none other than that distinguished home economics professor, that renowned gentleman of campus classroom and sign... Uh, excuse me, please. Hello? Hello, Murphy. This is Scurvy. Professor Jerry Colonna. Hello, Colonna calling command performance. Colonna calling command performance. Command performance to Colonna. Come in, Professor. Murphy, I'm 5,000 feet above the studio, circling for a landing. I'm coming right down. Oh, wait a minute, Colonna. You can't come down now. It's foggy. You can't land. I've got to come down. I've got to. I've got to. Why? <laughs> Silly me. Forgot my airplane. <laughs> Forgot below. Here I come. Hey, Colonna. Colonna, why are you going back up? Forgot my parachute, too. <laughs> Now, here I come. <laughs> what a crack up. Colonna, what happened to the plane? Dad uh, Murphy, never mind the script. Just take me out from under these sound effects. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jerry, my boy, you're stalling. Did you or did you not bring the lecture for us? Ah, yes, but uh, we'll have to make it short. I've got a date for gingivitis. Colonna, you mean Ginger Rogers? No, gingivitis. Professor, gingivitis is a thing which, if you're not very careful, can lead to badly bruised gums. Ah, you've kissed the little rascal? <laughs> fresh. You're very fresh, Colonna. Skip it. Professor, just what was on your mind. What? There's a song about Sam, accordion man, and a song about Mary Lou. There's a song about Ida, sweet as apple cider, and one sweet song about Sue. There is a piccolo player, a peanut purveyor, and a gigolo melody. But something is wrong. We should have a song about one who's a wonder to me. garbage collector, a man who is misunderstood. He seems to be glad when everything's bad, for then his collections are good. With business as rotten as ever, he never complains like the rest. So fill up your can for the scavenger man, with garbage he'll feather his nest. The longer we stall, then the stronger the haul that Hector must make the next day. So stick out your can for the scavenger man. Have you any old potato peel? I know how an old tomato peel. Here comes Hector, the garbage man. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you a lot. That's wonderful. Now it's time for... Uh, George, it's time to take care of this letter. It's from Corporal Ray Johansson in Japan. Oh, a request? Uh-huh. He said, Every handsome geezer in Hollywood is taking a crack at the part of Raymond Chandler's famous tough detective, Philip Marlowe. Everybody's played the part except the logical man. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Jerry Colonna. Oh. <laughs> so if you will play the part of Inspector Murphy, Murphy, Jerry will be the tough, hard-fisted, hard-drinking, hard-loving Philip Marlowe. And now, Command Performance presents Detective Marlowe in his dramatic fight to save a beautiful blonde widow from the hot seat. The title of this drama is... What's cooking? Marlowe speaking. Well, Tuesday didn't seem unusual at first. The day started the same old way. First it was dark, then the sun came up. In fact, I felt it would be a humdrum day. My luscious secretary, Tilton Lilton, came into my office and said, Chief, I 
bought you a new toy drum. Ah, thanks, Tilton. Now I can drum. No, Chief. You hum and I'll drum. No, Tilton. I'll drum and you hum. Okay. Hum, 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 hum. Drum, 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 drum. It was a humdrum day. <laughs> if only someone were here to entertain me. Marlowe, where's your crazy partner? Who oh, out making a very profitable journey across the East River. He left in a hurry. Is he completely equipped for the trip? Oh, yes, my dear. With a blank insurance policy and a wife that drowns underwater. <laughs> I like that boy's head. It comes to a ball point. <laughs> Hello, Philip Marlowe. If you're a woman, I'm the ideal private eye. I can wink all over as you walk by. <laughs> Who is this? This is Angela Lansbury. <laughs> uh, Phil, darling, I just wanted to say that if my crazy husband asks you to protect him, it's only another one of his crazy ideas. Angela, give me that phone. Marlo, Marlo, come right out here. My wife is about to shoot me. Ah, oh, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Uh... Oh. Oh. <laughs> his stupid fixation. Maybe I'm coming right out with Tommy. When you fired all those shots, did you hit your husband? I won't say. But on your way out... Yes? Pick me up a Cupid doll. <laughs> Taxi, taxi. Driver, follow that cab. What for? Who knows? It's a tradition. Now, <laughs> <laughs> ah, the old mansion was a gloomy foreboding place. I approached it with suspicion and trepidation. Leaving them to guard the front and rear doors, I took off my shoes and went in. Hey, wait for me. Who are you? Inspector Murphy, the detective. I have the eye of an eagle, the nose of a bloodhound, and the mind of a genius. You have? Yeah, and I'm sick of carrying them around. Where can I put them down? <laughs> well, hello, man. Did you get out of breath climbing up that hill? <laughs> you boys are supposed to be detectives. Aren't you going to ask me any questions? Uh, sure. What were you doing the night of May 18th? Never mind that. What are you doing next Saturday night? <laughs> Murphy, you're forgetting yourself. Let's attend strictly to business. You're right. Strictly to business. Sorry. I'll toss you to see who searches him. Hello. <laughs> uh, pardon, madam. Are these riffraff disturbing you? It's my butler, Immaculate Miller. <laughs> Immaculate, why do you call the gentleman riffraff? They're abominable clothes, milady. For instance, flat top here. He's wearing a fatigue suit. What do you mean, fatigue suit? This is no fatigue suit. It looks pretty tired. <laughs> You, the crumb behind the cookie duster. Who, me? That shirt you're wearing. That shirt is made of a very cheap grade of cloth. Cheap cloth? Funny, the label said it was Pillsbury's best. <laughs> Never mind, Immaculate. Get the jerk some tea. Very well, but we're all out of sugar. As the butler retired, I, I mean, uh, as the butler retired into the depths of his pantry, I gave him two lumps. Then I noticed Inspector Murphy was looking at the body. Mm-hmm. Is this the body? Yes. Mm-hmm. Wonder who did it. Oh, stop hounding me! I confess, I got my husband. I hated him. I hated him. I hated him. Stop stalling. <laughs> Obviously, a case of suicide. <laughs> I shot him from behind. How could a man shoot himself from behind? Rearview mirror. <laughs> Quiet, Marlo. Now, Angela, your husband just signed a million-dollar insurance policy, didn't he? Yes. When I came in the room, the ink was still wet. Yeah? Then what? I blotted him. <laughs> well, Clona, I can see we never get anything out of her. Let's get out our microscopes and look for fingerprints. Good idea, Murphy. Mm-hmm. Fingerprints here. Mm-hmm. Fingerprints here. Mm-hmm. Fingerprints here. Mm-hmm. Fingerprints here. Uh-uh. No fingerprints in here. No wonder you're looking down my throat. <laughs> Holy clown, maybe we're on the wrong track. Where were you 
the time of the shooting. Just where were you? Me? I was in my office. Well, we'll see about that. I've had a man following you. Hey, Sam, did you put a tail on Marlowe? Yeah, and on him it looks not your own. Well, you're okay. What will we do next? Follow the logical procedure. Angela? Yes? Here, stick your thumb in this thick black ink. Like this? Yes. Now we roll your thumb forward on this paper. Now we roll it backward. Forward, backward, forward, backward. Mr. Marlowe, what's this for? For fun. Now you do it to me. <laughs> I'll get that. Hello. Hello, Chief. My luscious secretary, Tilton Milton. Tilton, did you do as I ordered? Yes, Chief. I went out and rounded up every low-down, suspicious character in town. But, Chief, please hurry back. Why, are you in danger? Yes, they're all trying to sell me used cars. <laughs> Mr. Marlowe, what, what happened to Mr. Murphy? Probably ran away now that things are getting dangerous. Angela, so that you'll be safe, I'll lock you in the, into your room. I'll lock the door now. <laughs> okay, I'll lock it from the outside. <laughs> Chris, tell me, did you uh, by any chance see this killing take place? Oh, of course not. Uh-huh. I shut my eyes when I pulled the trigger. <laughs> this case was growing more baffling by the minute. Why should this young, lovely girl kill an 80-year-old old man who had just taken out a $10 million insurance policy? <laughs> Didn't make sense. If I could only figure out who had a motive, I sat down to think about this, idly leafing through a Sears robot catalog. Hey, Marlowe, you fool. While you've been wasting time, I figured out who killed the old man. Sure, I did it. No, you didn't. I figured it out by looking at the corpse. By looking at the corpse? Yeah, look here. Yeah? White tie? Yeah? Look here. Tails? Mm hmm. And look there. Pink sneakers. Immaculate Miller? You were the guilty man. Yes, I did it. I did it. I couldn't stand his clothes. I did it, and I'm glad, glad, glad. <laughs> Stop him, he's running for the window. You'll never get me alive. He bounced back. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens when you jump out these basement windows. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, Miller, come along with me. Well, this is a very baffling case. Very baffling, Miss Lansbury. Yes. You're a clever little beauty. I see that I'll have to make scorching love to you and coax the solution out of you. Angela, come into my manly arms. But Kelowna, Kelowna, the mystery is over. The case is solved. Now shut up. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> You can steer my handlebars with your lips. Oh, Gerald, you're wonderful. Well, that's enough dramatic acting and enough horror. So let's turn to the beautiful things of life, which can only mean an encore from lovely Martha Tilton, who's ready with... A little thing called How Are Things in Glockamora. This one's for Wayne, Walt, John, and Glenn in Kanoya, Japan. Maestro? <laughs> Come 
you, Martha Tilton. Thank you. And that's a grand way to tie up the package. Well, it's been fun, hasn't it, Angela? Indeed it has. And I guess this is thank you time again. Time to thank everybody for asking us in, isn't it, George? I'm afraid it is. And tonight, gang, those thanks come from Marvin Miller, Martha Tilton, Jerry Colonna, and the beauteous Angela Lansbury in order of appearance. This is George Murphy wishing you lots of luck and good night. This program was arranged with the aid of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.